Okay, in this video I'm talking about utilitarian versus Rawlsian versus weighted social welfare functions and what's the difference between them um, when looking at different allocations. So, to begin with, we have the utilitarian social welfare perspective, and that is literally just social welfare is adding up everybody's utility and weighting everybody's utility equally. So, um, the textbook has this definition, an allocation X is prefer preferred to an allocation Y if this statement is true. So to think about that, first we have to know what is, how do we think about an allocation X? And if we use our roommate example, imagining there's three roommates and there's 21 meals during the week, and the roommates have to decide who gets to use the kitchen for what meals, since the kitchen's only big enough for one person per meal. So 21 meals have to be divided among the three of them. So um, an allocation would be like seven meals each. Each person gets, um, gets seven meals that they have the rights to be in the kitchen for those meals. That would be one allocation. A different allocation would be um, 21 meals in the week. Uh, the first roommate, Talia, gets 10 meals. The second roommate, George, gets 10 meals. And the last roommate, Mary, gets one meal. That's a different allocation. So when we think about allocations, that's just taking our choice variable, whatever we're trying to divide up as the um, maximizer of the social welfare function, which is generally a group of people who've come together or else a leader of an organization that's in charge of maximizing the happiness or the social welfare of a group of people. So that's how we think about an allocation of, and of course X and Y, those are two different allocations I just gave. And we can see um, we're just summing up from I equals one to N. So N is just the number of people in our little society, and then in the roommate situation, there's three people, so n equals three, and it's just the utility of person one over that particular allocation, the utility of person two over that allocation, the utility of person three up um, over that allocation, and you just add up their utilities. So utilitarians say um, whatever allocation gives the greatest utility, greatest summation of utility to the greatest number of people, that's going to be preferred according to a ut utilitarian. Now, of course, an issue a lot of people have with this is the fact that this uh, does not reference inequality. So it could be that one particular allocation would uh, maximize every, the collective added up utility, but there's some people who are really, really bad off um, who, or who get a really unfair deal in the allocation, in which case you may want to use a different social welfare function if um, the equality issue is something that weighs heavily on you. So let's look at a couple of other options we have for social welfare functions. All right, so this second social welfare function that the Halvarian book talks about is the weighted social welfare function, which is very similar to the utilitarian social welfare function, except we're allowed to place different weights on different people. So um, here we have welfare of utility of person one, utility of person two, all the way up through utility of person n. And if we have three people in our roommate situation, n is equal to three as usual. Um, so we're summing all of their utilities, except we have this AI, this weight, so we could weight this really unfairly and put a really heavy importance weight on Talia's utility, a medium importance weight on George's utility, and a low importance weight on Mary's utility. Um, and if we did that, of course, the allocation we end up with is going to favor Talia and give Mary a bad end of the deal. Or we could have weights that are trying to make things a little bit more equitable. For example, we could put the highest utility weight on the person who has the least, whoever that happens to be. Um, and so if you like that idea of placing a higher utility weight on the person who's least well off in order to try to um, improve them, to try to improve the equity in the roommate situation, then you might be a fan of our next social welfare function, which is the Rawlsian one. So let's, let's look at that. So the Rawlsian social welfare function only has one person's utility in it, and that's the person who's worst off. Um, the person with the lowest utility, that's the person we care about, and really Rawlsians <clears throat> are focused on bringing up the bottom so that there's nobody falling through the cracks, nobody um, experiencing anything bad, and that's their main focus. So 
social welfare in a Rawlsian situation is the welfare over <clears throat> everybody's utility, utility of person 1, utility of person 2, all the way up through utility of person n, is simply which person among the group has this, the lowest utility. And whoever that is, that's going to be the utility of the group. So if you're trying to maximize utility, you try to bring up the bottom. And where does Rawlsian come from? Um, well, Rawlsian comes from the idea that um, what if you were to be born again, everybody's going to be born again into society, you don't know um, what situation you're going to be born into, you might want to make sure that you're not in a really, really bad situation, especially if you're loss averse like people are, you're afraid of a really bad situation, you want to create a world where we're um, <clears throat> minimizing or we're maximizing what's worst off the worst possible situation, making sure it's not that bad. Even if the total utility of everyone added up, like in the uh, utilitarian, is is not as high, um, Rawlsians focus on bringing up the bottom. So those are three examples of different philosophies on social welfare functions.